Mega Man 2 is hard. Y'all are so messed up. You had me believe Mega Man 2 was gonna be easier than Mega Man 1. But I guess that's what I get for playing the game on difficult mode. Mind you, I don't tend to play old games on difficult mode. But everybody and their mother said difficult mode was the default mode in the Japanese version, and thus that's what is meant to be played by us. And to that I say, no. There's a reason they added an easier mode in the US version and called it normal. And that reason was because Mega Man 1 was hard as heck and didn't sell well. So they needed to make this game easy and accessible for newbies. All of you trying to make an argument that the box art on Mega Man 1 was the reason it sold bad rather than the difficulty, need to take a good look at this box art and tell me with a straight face that this box art is what pushed the sales over the million copy mark. It was obviously the difficulty that made Mega Man 2 better. You know how I know? Because I'm a newbie. I played the difficult mode and I absolutely despised this game. And then I played the normal mode, and oh my god, I think I'm officially a Mega Man fanboy. And I didn't make the same mistake as I did with Mega Man 1. I actually recorded my second playthrough of this game because this time I wanted respectable footage rather than a compilation of me getting my butt kicked that I'd have to edit around. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For those of you unaware, this is the second video in my Mega Man series playlist. I'm going to run through the entire franchise, or most of it anyway, and I'm doing it all in release order. If you want more information as to how that came about, check out my Mega Man 1 video. Anyway, to provide a quick background, I've only ever played the Mega Man games once before, and in the case of Mega Man 2 it was back in 2017 on the mobile ports. I remember really enjoying all 6 mobile ports back then, which I'm told is a terrible thing to admit out loud, but they kept my interest enough to eventually get the Legacy Collection, and do the remaining OG Mega Man games, and then the X Legacy Collection, Mega Man 11, and the Zero series. So yeah, although the mobile ports are inferior, they were a gateway for me to get into the franchise, so I do have a soft spot for them. Anyway, after Mega Man 1 didn't do quite as well as Capcom had hoped, it was seemingly done for. But the team that was passionate about making a sequel was given permission to work on the game on their own time. So Mega Man 2 was in essence a passion project. In a similar vein to many other series, the second game in the series is where the shine really started to show. Think Sonic 2 or Mario Party 2 for example. The first game gave you the idea, and the second game set the blueprint for everything that was to follow. It's not a coincidence that nostalgia has been kind to those second games, because for many, they were actually the first real experience of the franchise. Mega Man 2 is no exception. It was a glorious success. And around the time the nostalgia cycle was kicking in, so too was the dawn of foundational internet opinions. Donkey Kong Country 2 would be considered the greatest 2D platformer of all time. Ocarina of Time would be considered the greatest early 3D game. And Mega Man 2 would be considered the greatest Mega Man game in a series that had 6 NES titles that looked the exact same. It's all part of the circle of life. Now I'm not saying these games didn't deserve the titles they were given. I just want to point out that as time went on and retro games became more readily available to the masses, I mean seriously, I can't walk into a store without tripping over a game collection, many of these GOAT games have been put under the lens by newcomers to the franchise to determine if they're still the GOAT. Uh, except the GOAT game. That one's still the GOAT. So where do I fall in this discussion? I mentioned in the previous video, I don't think the cover art had much to do with Mega Man 1 not being considered a success. The game was hard, and Mega Man was very difficult to control. He slipped and slid any time you wanted to get him moving or to come to an abrupt stop. Mega Man 2 refined his controls. So while Mega Man 2 has literally the exact same controls as the first game, it feels much better to play. But that's not enough. During the first game, the first playthrough put me through the ringer. I hated it. Such a cheap game with easy knockback and all these unreasonable challenges that made me want to pull my hair out. But the second time around I played it with some mastery of the levels and challenges, as well as knowing how to defeat all the bosses. Not only did I enjoy the game significantly more, it cut the time it took me to beat it in half. I was confident I had learned to Mega Man, so I figured I'd be able to handle Mega Man 2's difficulty mode that so many YouTubers and forums have claimed is the right way to play and enjoy the game. And well, I'm officially convinced people on the internet LIE. Just like everybody lied about beating the Yellow Devil without using the pause trick. Generally, before I finalize my scripts, but after I finish playing the games, I like to watch some videos from the popular YouTubers about the games to see if there are any points I had overlooked that I felt passionately about enough to discuss. In most cases, it might lead to a short instance where an important point of the story was missed or an important game mechanic was ignored in my script, so I address it. But it's rare that I actually make edits though, because I don't want to just regurgitate talking points for the sake of regurgitating them. But after playing this game, I started watching all these Mega Man 2 reviews, 
and heard every single one of them say the exact same thing. That the difficult mode was what they were basing their retrospective off of because the normal mode is too easy, and the difficult mode is also easy enough to get through. This was a sentiment shared by even people making videos of their first time playthrough experiences. But what I noticed in a lot of those videos is all of the footage they were showing said otherwise. I could tell based off the amount of hits a simple enemy was taken that they were playing in normal mode, or the amount of big weapon or health regenerators being dropped, or the conveniently timed transition screens when they'd face a main boss to avoid having any footage of how they probably use the rewind feature. I know they did this because I make YouTube videos where I lie about what I do too. Oh wait, no, how'd that get in my script? Anyway, so I actually think these videos I watched were very useful, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did eventually find the difficult mode easy and just didn't have footage of it. That's not the point of this. The point is that I genuinely wonder how many people made the same mistake I did, and started to question why they were so crap at Mega Man 2. Like, I can't be the only one to go through this mess. And mind you, I'm one of those gamer boys. I have more controllers than I have friends. I can beat difficult games. That isn't my issue. But I'm playing Mega Man 2 for the first time and taking the advice of all the popular YouTubers and jumping on difficult mode only to get my mega butt kicked. Did that not happen to anyone else and make them question their gaming competence? My first playthrough took me like three and a half hours. My second playthrough only took me one. And it's literally because I played it on normal. And I know this because as I was shooting the enemies and passing through various challenges, I still felt like I was being tested, but I no longer felt as though the game designer was trying to ruin my day. Rather, I was having fun. I was able to hold on to my E-Tanks and use them at useful points, defeat enemies and recharge on respectable amounts of ammo and health regenerators, and most importantly, absolutely annihilate everything in my path with Metal Man Saw. Seriously. The saw was my weapon of choice for the second playthrough, and it turned the game into a joke. The whole concept of experimenting with different weapons is non-existent in Mega Man 2, because on difficult mode, you can barely change weapons to find out what the correct attack to use is on a regular enemy or a boss without getting killed immediately. And on normal mode, if you figure out how good the saw is, nothing else in this game will ever be worth your time of day. In Mega Man 1, my second playthrough was fun because I had experimented a bunch in the first playthrough and learned how to get through various challenges with my arsenal. That's not really the case in Mega Man 2, outside of a few things like the air attack one-shot killing jumping machines that Sniper Joes are riding on. As a newbie to the Mega Man series, I'm willing to write a thesis statement on my defense of my claim that the only reason Mega Man 2 is as revered as it is is because everyone that bought it on the NES played it on normal mode, figured out the saw was strong as heck, barely lost any ammo as you spammed it, and was able to shoot in 8 directions. So of course they enjoyed this game. You weren't just Mega Man. You were a MEGA MAN! Also, in 1989, there weren't any big first-party games being released, so Mega Man 2 got a huge chunk of the Nintendo Power magazine, and I'd say that is the main reason the Mega Man franchise is as big as it is today, But Anyway, moving on from all of that, if you want to know the story of this game, I think it's about as relevant as it was in my previous video. I th it might actually be the exact same story, I'm not sure. Wily's going rogue and corrupting more robots, yada yada yada, it's an afterthought at this point in the series. The gameplay is almost the exact same as the first, but there are eight bosses this time around. There are E-Tanks that refill your health and you can carry four of them at a time, but you will lose all of them if you get a game over. There are also three items you can use to unlock as you progress through the game, rather than the Magnet Gun. They're basically horizontal and vertical moving platforms to give you a crutch, but are mostly just required in the end game. Thankfully, there's no singular item you must find without any guidance that is required, like the Magnet Beam was in the first game. But don't worry, there are other points in Mega Man 2 that will screw you over if you don't have the knowledge of how to accomplish a challenge ahead of time, and I'll get to those. I'll mostly be going over my experience on the first playthrough as I run through the adventure, while quickly adding points about differences in my second playthrough throughout. So my footage might be a combination of both experiences, and I'll probably be jumping back and forth depending on which footage covers my talking points better. Anyway, without further ado, it's time to cover everyone's favorite NES game, Mega Man 2. Man, this frickin' title screen is so iconic and cool. 8-bit be damned. Also, I've been humming this tune non-stop since I played the game. Such an iconic tune that I had memorized just from how often I've heard it online as background music to other videos. The intro of the game also gives you some composition and a semblance of the backstory, but that's not really worth going through. Anyway, we jump into the game and for whatever reason I decided Woodman would be a good starting point. Right off the bat, I found out that the art in this game looked much better than the first game. This forest theme looked really cool. 
There's a semi-difficult challenge here against these rabbits and bats that I was able to overcome. Something to note though is that on difficult mode, you're not going to be able to spam buster shots against the rabbits fast enough to kill it before it shoots a carrot at you. In normal mode, you can defeat the rabbits before they even take a shot. That's actually one of the ways I was able to figure out which YouTubers were playing on normal mode. Anyway, getting through the first section is easy enough, but then you go underground and there's this fire-breathing dog that you have to really work on dodging to defeat. The problem is, when you take care of it, there's another one literally right after it, and even less space to dodge. First death. Pretty quick. Tried again. Died again. Got into a rhythm and succeeded and was super proud and- Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me, there's a third one. <sighs> I lost another life, but I was able to make it past a ferocious beast this time. In the next section, we have these swinging monkeys and these birds dropping eggs with more birds inside them that defeated me. I'm on my last life now and really starting to wonder if I made a poor decision here. Brute forced my way past those dumb birds, beat some of these dumb rabbits, or at least jump past them, and then... What the heck are those running chickens? I can't even kill them. Game over. Alright, back to stage select. I needed someone easy. Quick man. This actually isn't too bad. I can jump right over these guys and... Oh, what the hell are these lasers? Survive that. Okay, this is easy. Even if the lights are turned off, I can take out these lanterns. More lasers? This cannot be the way to defeat the stage. I started experimenting with the rewind button at this point to see if it's even possible to get past the lasers. But I'm pretty sure it's not possible. There's gotta be some kind of power-up to get through them. Alright, so by this point I was 17 minutes into the game and I think I basically chose the two stages you can't really get through as your default mega self. At least not on difficult mode. I mean, I'm sure people with tons of experience can do it, but I doubt there are that many people that went through these stages first. Alright, time to completely start my playthrough over. For whatever reason, I remember hearing people say that Heat Man stage was always pretty hard, so I avoided that one. I decided to go to Air Man stage. I think I can take this one on. No problem. Some platforming in the sky, those dumb birds that drop eggs, but all in all, it's pretty manageable. I might actually beat my first stage. I still haven't lost life and I made it to the boss fight. Took the L on the first life. That's fine, I was at half health anyway. On the second life, I thought for sure I was going to go down, but Airman foolishly gave me his back and stood right in front of me, so I got my first kill. Here we go, next stage. I'm going back to Woodman. That didn't last long. Let's try Metal Man. At the time, I didn't know his attack was OP by the way. On my second playthrough, you bet your butt I started with Metal Man and used his attack the whole way through. Anyway, Metal Man's stage mostly involved platforming on these conveyor belts while facing off against various enemies. Eventually, you face off against these soda can stacks. In easy mode, they die in one hit. In hard mode, they take two hits. That's another way to figure out if someone's playing normal or difficult. Anyway, the stage is kinda messed up because they put an E-Tank down here, but you can't get it unless you have one of the items to jump back up, which at this moment I did have it, but I actually didn't know I had it. But if you're someone starting with Metal Man stage and go for the E-Tank, you're basically guaranteed death, which is really messed up. Beyond that, you have more of those sliding disc enemies you faced off against in Mega Man 1, but these are way easier to time around since they just go back and forth and only go fast when you're on the ground. They're much easier to predict. Anyway, at this point, I made it over to Metal Man. Naturally, I got my first death pretty quickly for my health regeneration. I tried the air attack against him and realized it was useless. On the final attempt, I just spammed the P shots on him and was surprised I didn't even have to use my E-Tank. Metal Man was defeated. Huzzah! I actually really enjoyed Metal Man and Air Man stages, but by this point in this game, I had already started to think that this game was much harder than Mega Man 1. Little did I know, the worst was still yet to come. It was easier to control Mega Man here, but the enemies were just way more difficult to challenge so far in the game. At least that's how I felt, but to be fair, I was only using the air attack and the pea shooter at this point. Anyway, I figured out I had a saw, so I figured it's time to go against the Woodman. The saw made taking on the fire-breathing dogs a lot easier. Also, at this point, I realized there was a second page for power-ups, and that's how I learned that this game had items. See, not everyone has to read a manual to learn stuff. Man, the saw is so good. It barely loses any energy when you shoot, and it goes across the entire map. It's so convenient. I still can't kill the running chickens though, but I did figure out they can actually jump right over you, so that's nice. Once again, I took a quick L against the boss so I can regain my health. On the second time around, I used the saw a bunch to weaken Woodman, but I ran out of ammo, so I finished him off with a pea shooter. And I think I'm starting to enjoy this game. Let's go to Flashman. This stage is ice themed and caused me to do some research actually. So I'm sure you guys already know this, but it turns out Capcom held a competition to allow people to design the Robot Masters, but they already designed a lot of the stages ahead of time. So many of these stages in this game might feel shoehorned in with the Robot Masters. Like He-Man looks like he's in a sewer that was edited from green and blue to red. I don't know if this is gospel by the way, it might just be a fan theory, but that's what I saw online. Anyway, so this stage puts you through a bit of a maze. You might use your platform items a bit to help you out. You'll also notice these weird looking walls that can be broken, but not with anything I currently carry, it's with the Crash Bomb. 
A lot of this stage involves dropping down, and I accidentally discovered my air attack could kill Sniper Joe jumping machines in one shot, which was really nice, and very useful. I was also rewarded with this long stretch of higher ground where I can avoid all the difficult challenges. It was awesome, I felt like I was in a Sonic game. Until I ran into a dead end and had to head all the way back, but hey it still gave me a huge shortcut before I made it to Flashman. With very low health and only a single life mind you. But I did have two E-Tanks which was useful. I didn't think the saw would be good against him because it was good against Woodman, but to my surprise, it made super easy work of him too. You know, as I'm going over this footage with you, I'm starting to wonder if the only reason I didn't enjoy the first playthrough is because of the first two stages I couldn't get through. I'm sure we'll run into more BS though. Let's continue. As I was fighting against Flashman, I noticed that he could stop time by the way. So like I expected earlier, this is the power that would be needed to defeat Quickman's stage. But not before giving myself a game over so I could have a full set of lives. Not realizing that I lost my E-Tanks with the game over. But it is what it is. Anyway, so it's kinda dumb. When you use Flashman's attack, you actually can't stop it. It's a one-time use, and will continue to drop until it runs out of energy. Also, you can't even change weapons and attack someone while it's working. This took it from being a game-breaking attack to a very situational item. Luckily, I did manage to make it to a capsule and go through the laser challenge, followed by facing off against some Sniper Joes, before finally making it to Quickman. But, my flash attack was all done. My metal attack didn't work against him, the leaves were kinda useless, Peace Shooter seemed to work fine though, just had to keep dodging him. On my second playthrough I did save enough of my Flashman attack to drain half his health so that was much nicer. But still it felt really odd the way Flashman and his attack were implemented in this game. Also can I just say, I hate how these items and weapons are labeled in this game. Like the items just say 1, 2, and 3, the weapons just have a single letter, but rather than the letter being a reflection of the weapon, it's the first initial of the Robot Master. So you want to use a leaf attack, so you're looking for an L, but in reality you have to click the W for Woodman. The amount of times I accidentally used a flash attack thinking it was F for fire when I needed to click H for heat was infuriating. But anyway, Flashman's stage is an interesting one, but one that really requires an amount of trial and error to overcome. I think it's bad stage design quite honestly. And easily my least favorite stage in this game due to not only its layout and challenge, but also how situational a flash attack is. Both in its implementation and the way it's used against Quickman. But, we keep moving forward. And I wanted to beat Heat Man, so I figured it'd be time to go after Bubble Man. Because water is strong against fire. And I had Woodman's Leaf, and in Pokemon, grass is strong against water, so I thought that might work. Bubble Man's stage is pretty good. It has an acceptable amount of challenge. Quick Man has a boomerang that I enjoyed using quite a bit. I think I saw a post made online that it's the only weapon in the game that could actually damage every single bad guy. Like, some weapons are useless against certain enemies, but the boomerang can damage everybody. I didn't really test it out, but that's pretty cool if it's true. I definitely use it in this stage. Also, this stage had a fun gravity gimmick since it's underwater, but you have to be very careful with how you jump because there are spikes everywhere. I used the boomerang through most of the stage, but obviously on my second playthrough it was all about the metal saw. I figured the boomerang would be the weapon of choice against this boss too, since it worked all throughout the stage. And yeah, it was very strong. Pretty easy to destroy the bubble boy. And as such, I was ready for Heat Man. Lots of platforming in this stage. And knowing what I know now about the Robot Master designs, it definitely feels like it was meant to be a water level. Luckily, the invisible block challenges take place in this stage and they're so much easier than in Mega Man 1. They didn't really frustrate me at all. There was just a tad bit of annoyance with the timing next to these pillars, but it was impatience on my end more than anything else. Of course, the reason I didn't mind the block challenges was because when you get to the actual difficult part, you can just use the rocket platform to fly right over it. So I didn't even try the harder challenge. I got down, defeated a Sniper Joe, and just like that, made my way over to Heat Man. Interestingly enough, he still offers quite a bit of challenge because he has a shield stopping you from spamming the attack on him. It's easy to time once you learn it and take care of him. I'm surprised people said this stage was the hardest. I'm guessing the reason people say this stage is one of the harder ones is because you need the rocket item to make it easy. Or maybe fighting Heat Man without the bubble gun is what scared so many people off. I'm not sure. But I'd say doing the bubble man stage and the woodman stage prior to the fire stage is all that's really required. And well, I guess in order to beat those ones easily, you should probably do Quick Man and Metal Man first. And in order to do Quick Man, you'd need Flash Man. Ha, uh, okay, yeah, never mind. I guess it doesn't make sense to keep He-Man for one of the final stages. Man, Mega Man is so cool. That whole thought chain is why I enjoy this concept so much. Let's face off against Crash Man. This stage was very vertical. Lots of ladders and fights against these annoying floating cans. In my second playthrough, when I was smarter, I stuck with the saw blade and didn't find it annoying at all. But during my first playthrough, they were a nuance. But despite that, I'd still consider this an easy stage. Just one that requires some time. There are sections with a ladder and these annoying birds that I found a use for Flashman's item, 
but when I made it to the top, I realized it was just for health regeneration. I did finally become the wiser though and switched to the metal saw, which made the second half of the stage much more enjoyable. I experimented a bit with my first life and figured out the air attack is the way to go against Crash Man. With all 8 bosses defeated, we once again move on to the end of the game, where we're greeted with that sweet sweet music, and those stupid stupid chickens. The first stage requires use of all your items to get through, also a good amount of use of the metal saw. The first annoying section is this area with the floating helicopter platforms. It feels like the angle and the way they're set up is just not really optimal. You're likely to run out of energy at this point and have to go down and farm to get enough to pass this area. I don't even know how I made it past without losing my mind. The next area had a bunch of platforming when all of a sudden a freaking dragon started following you. I figured the heat attack would be good against the dragon since my metal saws were no good. I don't know, I figured fight fire with fire. I knocked down most of his energy and finished it off with a pea shooter. It's actually a pretty easy fight, but if you get hit, you'll be lucky to not face enough of a knockback to fall to your death. The next wily area starts you off in a section with some helicopter looking things, and you'll quickly figure out the need to restock the health of your second item, which was my first instance of farming, and probably around the time I started to hate this game. This was so annoying, and I wanted to keep my health. Honestly, if I knew then what I know now, I'd have just taken the death and gotten game over and sacrificed my E-Tanks during this endgame, because this isn't even the worst part of the game for me. Also, I thought it was cool that I did this weird metal saw glitch. Not sure if it's supposed to happen, but it did help with farming a bit. After wasting way too much time, I finally got my item 2 up to a decent amount, tried to farm to refill my health too, but I kept getting hit and frustrated, so I said screw it and blast it off. I'm not kidding, this whole ordeal must have wasted like 10 minutes of my time. I was so mad that I had to mindlessly farm, but the worst was still yet to come. After I blasted across, I was able to collect an E-Tank and also got myself a 1-up and an ability to restock some of my equipment which was nice. When I got here, I decided to use my Crash Bomb to get a 1-up and an E-Tank, which I definitely regretted in the upcoming stages of the endgame. Drop down, face more of these drill guys that were very stingy on their drops. On normal mode, in my second playthrough, they did provide me with a ton of health which was super nice. After that there are some narrow areas that require you to use your items to get through. I also found another use for the Flashman's attack. The boss here was against the stage. I didn't have the metal saw on my difficult playthrough by this point, so I decided to go with the bubble attack. It was tough, but I managed to defeat it. As soon as you start the next stage, it gives you a chance to use two crash bombs to collect some items. Then there's another low gravity water challenge with these unfair leap of faiths that you're certain to lose a life on. And then you face off against the Guts Tank, which I think is modeled after Gutsman from the first game, so I guess he's Wily's favorite. As per usual, I experimented with a few items after learning that the saw didn't work eventually landed on the boomerang and was able to make quick work of the tank. Alright, so at this point of the game, I thought it was hard. Really hard. Slightly harder than Mega Man 1. But I knew there was a normal difficulty to play, and I knew I was nearing the end about 2 hours into the game. So it was still reasonable. This is now effectively the final stage in the game. There are some challenges early on with these pits that you can't really see, but they're not the worst thing to maneuver around. Apparently most people use the bubble gun to figure out how to get around, but I didn't know that at the time. Then you get to these sections with a platform that do have a slight element of puzzle solving which I didn't mind too much. It's a pretty easy challenge, but you do need to do your due diligence to avoid getting knocked down and landing on spikes. When you get to the bottom, you face a wave of Sniper Joes. Like a ton of them. The annoying thing is, you have to frequently switch back and forth because the air attack kills the jumping machine, but you use the pea shooter to kill Sniper Joe. And it's almost impossible to just brute force yourself through here because of how much health they take. I decided to just use an E-Tank. And here we are folks. The reason why this game was such a sour experience for me. I suppose this could have happened playing on normal difficulty too. But the difference is, if it happens on normal mode, this game is so much more generous that farming would probably only have taken me 2 minutes. And that's if I even needed to farm. Because on normal you probably seldom run out of anything at all. But I got to this dumb room with no crash bombs. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I experimented, nothing was working. I decided to look it up online and my first fears were realized. I needed crash bombs to get through this stage. But I was not ready for a game over, because I didn't want to lose my E-Tanks before the final boss. But again, if I knew then, what I knew now, I'd have just gone for the game over. And the worst part too was after I died, I had to go back and redo a bunch of the challenge with the floating platforms, because that's the last checkpoint. And I started farming. And the way this dump stage is set up, there's basically no location where you can swivel back and forth so that a Sniper Joe can respawn. When you leave the screen for one, another one pops up. It was aggravating. I was taking bullets left and right. I wasted an E-Tank, but I still had one remaining. I lost a life, but I had to keep farming even though I lost another life. 
I knew that I needed 7 crash bombs. And I also figured out that if you lose a life after you blow up one of the walls, then the wall will remain destroyed on your next life. But due to the nature of how slow I'd have to move through the boss fight, and how I'd have to use my platform items to maneuver and how much health these dumb turrets make me lose, I knew not only would I have to farm for crash bombs, but I needed to farm for health too. It was so tedious. Use an air attack, kill the jumper, switch to the pea shooter, dodge three shots, kill sniper Joe. Hope to god that when you kill the jumping robot it doesn't drop anything then because it'll land right on sniper Joe, and that means you can't pick it up without taking a hit and we can't afford to take the hits right now. I hated this. I think I understand what people playing Mega Man 1 felt when they got to the endgame and realized they needed the magnet beam, but I think this is way worse. I am not exaggerating when I say that one whole hour of my 3 to 3 and a half hours playthrough of this game was farming in this very spot. This is terrible game design, and as such, I can never recommend to anyone to play through Mega Man 2 without a guide on their first playthrough. It's unacceptable. I'm sorry. I feel like I have to stress how bad this is because every video I've ever seen on this game since I played it always drops a quick line about how this could be annoying to new players, but doesn't really stress how annoying. And I'm convinced it's because they played the game on normal and were able to farm quicker, or it's been 30 years since playing this game and they experienced this at the age of 8 when old games were just as terribly designed. <sighs> okay, I think I'm done. On my second playthrough, none of this was an issue though, so there's always that I can fall back on. What followed was a boss rush. I didn't have any E-Tanks, so I gladly just got myself a game over so I can refill all my ammo. I got through all the bosses pretty easily to be honest. Now that I knew their weaknesses it wasn't really a challenge anymore. And after you defeat each boss, they do drop a big health regenerator. Also, this is when I learned Metal Man dies in two hits of his own blade on difficult mode. And on my next playthrough I learned that on normal, it's only one hit. The Metal Saw is like Zeus's Lightning. This is literally a different game when you play it on normal mode and starting with Metal Man. So much more enjoyable too, because you can ignore all the crappy game design stuff. And I'm not just talking about the farming. I mean all of the OP enemies mixed with the unreasonable knockback damage they give you in the extremely specific points in the game where you have to be precise to get through without any compromise. All of those game design issues are solved on normal mode with the Metal Saw, and it makes for a much more appealing adventure. But anyway, after the boss rush we make it to Wily. My footage for this final boss was ruined during my first playthrough, so fortunately for me, I'll strictly be doing the normal playthrough for this portion. I say fortunately because all you'll see is a bunch of easy deaths and stupid moves otherwise. But anyway, this was the part where I learned you could actually charge up your heat attack. I was holding down the button and started to glow, so I just kept holding it until it got super high pitched and I wasted Wily's first phase. Brought out the boomerang and got rid of him pretty easily in the second phase. In the final area, you need to run through a cave with dripping acid. It's easy enough, and at the end of it you'll find Wily who transforms into a freaking alien. On my first playthrough, I discovered that the only way that this hurts him is the bubble attack. Thank god I had ammo, otherwise I'd have lost my damn mind. On the second playthrough, I comfortably dodged his attacks and unloaded bubbles on him when I got the chance. I have no idea what this somber ending is from a story perspective, but I was driving with it. I was a broken man, a shell of my former self. I could have walked the four seasons right next to Mega Man when I finished this game on difficult. I don't know why people online think it's a good idea to tell people to go through difficult mode first. It's terrible advice. If you want to enjoy Mega Man 2 the way it's meant to be enjoyed, as a Mega Man game, blind, without a guide, and without suggestions, then difficult mode is a terrible way to start because there are points that will artificially pad out the game by 50% more than intended due to the need to farm and stingy nature of item drops on difficult mode. I can concede that normal mode is probably too easy, especially if you hang tight onto the metal saw. But to that I ask, why wouldn't you hang onto the metal saw? Honestly, if I do a third playthrough of this game, which let's be frank, I probably will after this video is done, I'm probably going to run it on difficult but only with the metal saw. It's there and it's available. I don't see a point to artificially challenge myself more for this game in particular. Because this is a huge series with many games, many of these horrid game design decisions are fixed in future titles. I don't know how people can consider Mega Man 2 the best game in the series, because I can't possibly imagine the upcoming games to have the items as broken as the Metal Saw, or traps as terrible as the Blue Beam turret fight. Those aren't minor details to scoff over. They're big deals. They're as bad as a silver ball puzzle in Sonic 06 for goodness sake. And you know what, oh god, I just realized I am hating on this game way too much and I'm starting to sound like a Sonic fan. It's still too soon since I finished that series. You know what, never mind guys.
This game was super fun. Make sure you play it on normal and use the metal saw. Thanks for watching. Dean out.